Today, we're gonna get our silky smooth scrolling on with something called locomotive scroll. Hey everybody, what's up? Gary Simon here. So today we're gonna to be stepping into the world of front-end development and we're going to be checking out a JavaScript library called Locomotive Scroll. Now Locomotive Scroll has been around for a while, but it gives you so many options and flexibility for creating nice, smooth scrolling, kind of like a, a locomotive train, if you will, how it takes a while for it to stop. And also parallax that's built into it if you wish to use that. So this is the GitHub page for it, which I will link below. I'm gonna show you how to install it uh, with a JavaScript a bundler. Um, we're gonna be using Parcel. And there are a lot of options here. Uh, so a lot of popular websites uh, that are, you know, really well designed kind of sites that you see that are on like on the AWWW awards site. Uh, and so, yeah, so I'm going to show you how to get up and running with that. And as always, make sure to check out designcourse.com, enter your email for the upcoming launch and subscribe here as well. And let's get started. One second before we begin, the sponsor of this video is Scrim. Scrimba. Now, in case you've been living under a rock, Scrimba.com is an interactive learning platform for coders. They've recently launched their front-end development career path, which is a collection of courses that cover HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, and much, much more, as you see. It's over 75 hours of awesome content, there are hundreds of interactive coding challenges, and it's all geared towards helping you go from beginner to someone that's hireable as a front-end developer. So check out the first link in the description below to get 50% off. All right, so what we have here is just uh, an empty, or well, almost an empty folder. Why is why would I say it's empty? It's not empty. Loco, I'm calling it for locomotive, well, whatever. And inside of it, I just have an index.html with some quick boilerplate, which is generated, by the way, hitting exclamation point enter, which is an Emmet abbreviation for just generating all this stuff. I also added uh, this link at, or link element to a CSS main.css file. I'm using SAS here, so um, you want to get the live SAS compiler, which is right here, if you want to do the same thing. And I'm also using, um, I won't be using the live server this time, I forgot, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, so there's no HTML written in here, that's custom at least. And what we want to do first is I'm going to go ahead and get uh, our locomotion or locomotive scroll uh, included into our project. So we're just going to use, um, a JS with a bundler option right here. And if you want to install it, right here is what you want. NPM install locomotive scroll. So down here in the terminal, first thing we're gonna do is NPM init hyphen Y. That's gonna create our package JSON file right here, which is now empty. And now we're gonna run that file or the file command, NPM install locomotive hyphen scroll. So this should go here pretty quickly. Yep, we're done. And at that point, we're gonna to come to our index.html. We're gonna type script. And our source is just gonna be a file that doesn't yet exist called index.js. We're gonna create index.js right here. Inside of index.js, we want to uh, go ahead and just put in just this real quickly. We'll change that up in a second. We're gonna save that. And then we're gonna use, uh, instead of like Webpack, there's a much simpler uh, alternative called Parcel. I already have it installed. I also have a video tutorial on my YouTube channel. Just go to my channel and then click the search button and just type in Parcel. Uh, and I'll show you how, you know, basically how to install it. It's very simple. And then um, how to use it essentially. Parcel index.html. So that's, that launches a server at localhost 1234. And so if I click that, we'll see uh, where our, our blank page is obviously right here. Um, we're not done just yet with the setup. First, we need to come over here. We need to add the base styles uh, to our CSS file. So if you click this, we can just click on raw, just copy that. So I'll create um, another file in here. We'll just call this base.css, paste that in, close it. We don't have to deal with that again, unless you wanted to make custom adjustments to like the custom scroll bar or the, the handle, the scroll handle, if you wish. Um, we're gonna put that just right here and that's CSS base.css. All right, awesome. So 
at this point, it's ready to roll. And if we come out here, back to the documentation, which is right there. All right, I uh, we can get a real quick example going here. Um, but let's go ahead and write our own and then I'll explain exactly what's happening um, as we go along. So let's get the HTML first and foremost put onto the page. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a div and this is kind of following the same, that, that quick boilerplate that you just saw right here. In fact, I can just copy this. We're gonna make adjustments to it though. I'm gonna copy that right there. Now you can see we have all these custom attributes like data scroll container, data scroll section, uh, H1, data scroll. Well, we'll get to those in a second, uh, but instead of these being divs, I want this to be sections. All right, and then also obviously we're gonna close those as well. Um, the reason I like to use, to use sections is just, be, just because it's semantic to me and we're gonna make them 100 viewport height here in a second. Um, we're also going to change uh, this up. We're just going to have this be an H1, and it's just going to say you should subscribe. And then also a paragraph. We're not going to put anything here. And I'm just going to copy a little bit of text off. And she says, I mean, you should enter your email at the new, and it links to designcourse.com landing page. All right. So that's all we want for that section. And the next section we're going to have is a class of section two, because we're gonna reference this uh, specifically. Um, we're also gonna do an ID, and you'll see why we use that in a little bit uh, later in the tutorial. And notice we also have this custom data attribute, data scroll section. Um, and then we're gonna have another H1. Technically I should just use uh, H2, but you know, whatever. I'm just gonna leave this at you should subscribe. I'm not really being, I don't really care about the content so much. Uh, so yeah, all again, what I'm really gonna do is just copy this whole part. So these are basically the same exact thing. All right, at this point. So now if I save this and we go here, you can see we don't see anything scrolling. That's because we actually have to have scroll bars, right? Because this isn't styled and we have a lot of vertical space. So we're gonna go to our main SAS file and in our main SAS, uh, we're gonna do just a couple things real quickly. Um, we're gonna set box sizing border box, which helps deal with um, overflow issues when it as it pertains to uh, padding and margin. Um, we're also gonna have height, 100 viewport height, margin zero, font family, new nido. Um, and then we're gonna have our section. So our section height, 100 viewport, hi viewport height. And let's just do a padding of 10 EM, make a nice big old thick white space. So now watch this. Oh, it doesn't work. All right, well, let's figure that out. All right, um, console is cleared, console, source. All right, let's work through this. Index.js, source is index.js. All right, so whenever something like this ends up happening. I like to, let's just do a console log to make sure it's even showing up, yeah. All right, so it is. But this should be a custom scroll bar and it should be smooth at this point in time. Um, let me look at one other thing over here. Oh, that's because we need to add some options to this. I told you I was gonna change it and then I didn't change it. We're gonna change uh, scroll same thing, except we're just opening it up in uh, to our properties here, which accepts um, an element. So we're, we're, we need to specify a query selector of data scroll container, which is coming from here. All right, that's a scroll overall scroll container, so it knows which one to make adjustments to. And then smooth is true. So let's save that. There we go. Now we have our nice smooth scrolling but there's more all right so let's remove that silliness right there and let's also close this out we don't need that anymore um let's style those uh, sections just a little bit better just so we can see uh, the difference between the two sections which is relevant to understanding what's happening more with locomotive scroll font size we're gonna have is three m units um our paragraphs let's 
font size that just to 1.5 m units. Uh, we're gonna have, you know what? I don't have to, you, you guys don't care about this. We're just gonna change the link color here to white, font weight bold. And then we're just gonna have um, the first child and last child of the sections here. N remember this is section and we're just doing and first child right here and last child. We're just changing the, uh, the backgrounds a little bit. So now if we save this and go back, uh, we'll see this is what we have working with us so far. I just love the whole smoothness, the, 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 the locomotive uh, effect that it has applied. Um, so there's a few things uh, that you, there's a lot, actually there's a lot of things that you can do with locomotive scroll. And I, as you can see, you can use it with methods and with events. Um, there's a lot of options here, like for instance, um, you can specify an offset. The descriptions are all over here um, in terms of uh, global in view trigger offset, use a string with percentage to use a percentage of the viewport height. Um, so these right here, these instance options are all specified in the index.js file uh, right here. So for instance, um, if we wanted to specify let's see let's oh lerp right here you can actually choose or specify the the speed no it's multiplier sorry about that the multiplier uh, if you want this to be like a faster scroll or slower then you can specify the multiplier property right here so we can put multiplier by default it's at one so if we change it to like 0.3 and save you'll see how slow it doesn't really kind of, it, it doesn't really go very far. And that's kind of like bad usability in my opinion, because I'm using my mouse scroll wheel and like, I like really have to go far on the other opposite end. Like you can change this to like five and you'll see how this behaves really fast, a little bit too fast. So, you know, there's a nice middle ground in the middle. I would say one, is pretty good, I like that. But nonetheless, now you understand that you can use, you can specify any of these over here in this object area and the, the configuration options for a locomotive scroll. Um, next up, element attributes, all right? So every time you want, uh, you, one thing that's really cool by the way is that you, it has worked in parallax as well, if you want parallax. So let's just work in some parallax um, to one of these elements here. So let's go ahead and we're going to say first, if you want to have parallax or anything affected by, by that, you have to put in the custom attribute data hyphen scroll. All right. Very important. Otherwise it won't work. Um, we also for parallax, we put in data scroll and then speed. Now let's just make it two. So we can go ahead and bring this back up. Now notice that now we put it on the paragraph, the last paragraph element here in the second class and watch how cool that is. And of course, if you adjust this value, it's going to affect it a lot more. So you can adjust this at your own will. Um, we can also attach a custom class or class that gets attached to this element right here when it is scrolled into view when it's in the viewport. And that allows you to specify custom CSS properties in that class that make it do or change um, in any number of ways. And then you can apply a transition to make it animate, which is really cool. So let me show you how that one works. Um, so what we wanna do is specify data scroll class right here, the element in view class. So data scroll class, And we'll just say uh, scroll class. I'm not very unique or original. So we'll save that. And in here, we're going to, in our CSS, we're going to define a scroll class. And let's just make the opacity one, which is what it already is. But we're going to take our custom paragraph, which has this uh, class attached to it, opacity zero, and then transition opacity will say something crazy like six seconds. So now 
we come back and we scroll down that uh, it's not working why is that not oh i think i know why because we didn't have we i didn't yet add that class so class equals custom p for paragraph now it shall work look at that so you could do any number of things and notice how it doesn't it, it's not making it go back to uh, the opacity zero every time there's a repeat attribute or option if you will um right here data scroll repeat so we take that and we say data scroll repeat equals true so now the behavior is if we do it again now it's going to add that back every time so you can also do uh, you can adjust the scroll speed by the way um with data scroll speed oh right there I, okay i think i for some reason i didn't think i i covered that um but notice if you make it really fast it's going to affect uh its position uh, among other elements so you have to fine tune that um, you can also also have added this right here. Um, you can make this a parallax element by adjusting or adding the properties here. You need to add data scroll to this element along with the data scroll speed, and then you can make them both parallax. So there's a million different things you can do here. Um, just go through all the documentation. Uh, there's a lot of properties. I just data scroll sticky you can do delays you can change the direction uh, of the parallax you can make like a horizontal parallax where it moves from uh, left to right or right to left just a ton of options very very cool stuff all right so hopefully you enjoyed that if you did make sure to subscribe leave a comment leave a like check out designcourse.com and i'll see you soon goodbye